My name is Scott Hooper. I'm the president of Guardian Information Services, an IT firm in the Tampa Bay area. Today I am doing a presentation on cybersecurity and how to stay safe online. With the growing presence and sophistication of online threats like viruses, ransomware, phishing scams, business email compromise, it's important to have the right protection and to follow a few simple policies to stay safe. I'm going to discuss three types of attacks today. Phishing attacks, business email compromise, and smishing attacks. So what is a phishing attack? The best way to understand what they are is to consider what a fisherman does on a lake. He uses a fake worm hoping that one of the hundreds or thousands of fish in the lake are fooled to think it's real and take the bait. A cyber phishing attack is the same thing. A bad guy sends out thousands of fake emails hoping that someone will be fooled and respond to the email. Let's look at some examples. In this first phishing attack email, they want you to think it's from Microsoft and your account has been blocked. They also want you to click on the Verify Now link and enter your credentials. If you did that, you just gave the guys access to your email. You can tell it's fake by looking for red flags. And let me talk about some of those. First, looking at the top, it says it's from Microsoft, but clearly, right next to it, you can see it's going to a totally different email address. Again, this is a red flag. You don't always see this. It can be spoofed where it has what looks like a correct address, but that's one thing to look for. Also, down below here, the Verify Now link, if you hover over it, it would show you that it's not going to a Microsoft address. In this second example, the goal is to get the email recipient excited about an Amazon refund and for them to supply credentials so your Amazon account can be hacked. If you hover over the link, it will show it's not from Amazon. This third example I've seen for many years. However, in the past it was easy to catch them because of really bad spelling and grammar mistakes. Today they are getting much more sophisticated. The goal of this email <coughs> is to get your online banking credentials. So let's look for the red flags here. First, you have the wrong email address again. There are spelling and grammar mistakes in this example, but this is an older one from 2014, and a newer one may not have as many mistakes. If you hover over the link, uh, this would show you it's not a Bank of America address, so make sure you do that. But more, the, the more important factor here to look at is that all emails that request credentials are requesting money or information should always be considered fake and then verify to see if it's real. Do not ever click on the links in these emails. Let's move on to business email compromise where phishing attacks are very generic emails that go out and hope that and they hope that someone will respond these are very specific it's like spear phishing compared to phishing if phishing attacks are like fishing on a lake and you hope a fish will swim by and take your bait then with spear phishing you see a big fish you hunt it down and you spear it. That's what cyber criminals do when performing business email compromise attacks. They find a company on the internet, they glean information from the website and from their social media accounts, 
They then look for employee information and look at their social media accounts. After gathering all this information for days or weeks, they send out emails masquerading as the CEO, as the president, as a pastor of a church, the principal of a school. Any leader of an organization can be targeted. Let's look at some examples. In this first business email compromise example, the goal of the cyber criminal is to attain confidential employee information. Typically in business email compromise attacks, the from address will either be spoofed with the actual address or it will be very similar to the same address. All Guardian customers have filters in place to stop 100% spoofed emails and the only thing that my customers will see is emails that look very similar where they're trying to fool you but they'll be the domain will be misspelled or something like that. My suggestion for request of confidential information is to always get a verbal confirmation. This is a common business email compromise for my customers. The goal of the cyber criminal is to fool an employee or a parishioner to think their pastor has asked them to buy gift cards as a favor. Jumping at the chance to please the pastor they fall for this scam. Always assume requests involving money or requesting for confidential information is fake and verify it. Our third attack is smishing. It's basically the same as phishing or business email compromise attacks. They just send it via text messages. Again, my advice is to assume all requests for money or confidential information is fake. Let's summarize by going over the red flags to look for and the good practice procedures you should follow. Number one, look for bad spelling or grammar on any of the emails or text messages. Number two, Check to see if the email matches the company domain and also any links go to a company domain address. Number three, if any email is requesting confidential information or money, assume it's fake and verbally verify. Number four, make sure you have a good password policy and do not write your password on a post-it note and then store it on your monitor or PC, in the drawer, or under your keyboard. Lastly, your IT staff can add security to help filter out majority of these emails. However, in the end, you are the best defense against these cyber attacks. I'd like to thank everyone for watching my video today on cybersecurity. If you have any questions, or would like me to make this presentation in person to your group or organization, please email me at cybersecurity at guardianis.com. Thank you.